What's going on friends and welcome back. In this lesson, I will be explaining decorators in Python. Understanding closures in Python is a prerequisite for this lesson. Make sure to check the link below for the previous lesson where we explained closures. These three properties make a function a closure. First, it is a nested function, which means a function inside another function. Second, it is able to access a variable in the outer function. Third, it is the returned value in the outer function. This user function sitting inside the user factory function is a closure. Now let's move on to explaining decorators. A decorator is a function which takes another function as an argument with the sole aim of extending or decorating it. You can think of a decorator as a wrapper that provides additional functionality to an already existing function. Suppose we have a function named grid. The greet function does not know how to greet correctly. It only calls out the name of the other person. Let's define the greet function def greet the doc strings greets a user incorrectly. That function returns a name. For now, let's make it a constant name with one ray. Now let's define another function which takes a function as an argument with the aim of decorating that function. Let's name the function greeting decorator def greeting underscore decorator. It takes a function as an argument. Now within this function, we want to define a closure. Let's name the closure wrapper def wrapper. We are going to say name equals, we want to call the function that was passed to the decorator. And we cannot say decorated name, which is a new variable, equals f strings high and the name returned by the called function. Now let's return the decorated name, decorated name, return decorated name. Now we want to return the wrapper, which is a closure wrapper. Essentially, we are calling the part function here. Remember that the grid function returns only a name. So we want to add extra text to what it normally returns. Now let's go ahead to make use of the greeting decorator. Remember that a decorator takes a function as an argument. So we want to pass a function to this decorator whenever we are calling it. Let's create a new variable. Let's call it decorated greeting equals. We want to call the greeting decorator. Greeting decorator. Now for us to call the greeting decorator, we are going to pass a function which is greet. When you call this greeting decorator, everything inside the function body is executed and the wrapper function is returned. The wrapper function returned is set to a new variable. So we can go ahead to call the function decorated greeting. We can call it because we know that a function is returned. So if we call this function now, it means that everything inside the wrapper function will be executed. Let's print the returned value on the screen. Print this. Now let's execute the program to see the progress. Great. We have been able to decorate the grid function, which only returns a constant name. If you take a closer look at this code, you will agree with me that we are calling this wrapper function. Grid decorator returns the wrapper. This is similar to how closure works. Based on this understanding, we can say that decorator wraps another function and adds extra functionalities to it. Another question we need to answer is how can we pass arguments from a function so that the decorator can make use of it? The previous example uses a constant string, which is read one ray. What if we need to greet someone else? That means the greet function needs to take a parameter name and the type is of a string data type and the name will be the returned value. Now, should we pass the name here, let's say Ray. If we do that, Python will raise an error that greet decorator takes just a single argument. If you take a look at this greeting decorator, it only takes one parameter, but we are trying to pass two arguments. Let's execute the program to see what happens. As you can see, Python raised a type error. Greeting decorator takes one positional argument, but two were given. So this means this cannot work. A good place to pass the argument is here, which is in the decorated greeting. Remember that when you call this function, you are really calling the wrapper function. So we can pass 
the username here, let's say Ray, what that means is that the past name can be accessed here. So we can say past underscore name. So now we can call this function, which is the grid function, with the past name. Let's say past underscore name. Now let's execute the program again to see the output. Great, it works. Sometimes you may not know in advance the number of arguments that would be passed to the function we want to decorate. In such case, we can use star x and double star quarks. Star x will capture the positional arguments as a tuple, while double star quarks will capture the keyword arguments as a dictionary. The above syntax of using a decorator works, but Python provides a better alternative. If you want to decorate a function, you can simply place the add symbol on top of the function you want to decorate, followed by the name of the decorator, name of the decorator, name of decorator. This is an easier approach to use the decorator. Now, let's go ahead to decorate the grid function. Um, let's comment this out. Then we can bring down the grid function. Now, we want to decorate the grid function. We just need to use the add symbol, then the decorator, which is greeting decorator. Now, what you've written here is the same as this. This means that you want to decorate the greet function with another function. It is the same as passing the greet function as an argument to the decorator. Now, let's go ahead to call the greet function greet. We want to print the returned value on the screen. Print this on the screen. Now, let's execute the program to see the progress. All right, I forgot to pass the argument, which is Ray. Now, we can execute the program again. Great, it works. All right, friends, we've seen how to use a single decorator, that is, using a single decorator to decorate a function. It is possible to decorate a function with more than one decorator. If you take a look at this ordinary function, you can see that we have two decorators on top of it. The order of execution is from the base to the top. That means decorator 1 will be executed before decorator 2, as shown in this code snippet. Let's add another decorator to add a prefix to a name, such as Mr. Now, let's define a new decorator. Let's say def prefix decorator underscore decorator. It takes a function as an argument. Then within this function, we want to create the wrapper function, which is the inner function, also known as a closure. This wrapper function takes the name as an argument as defined here. In this wrapper function, we want to say name equals, we want to call the function with the past argument. Then we want to say prefixed underscore name equals f strings. We want to say Mr. Then the name returned from the function call. We want to return the prefix name, return prefix name. We need to return the wrapper, return wrapper. Now let's go ahead to make use of the grid function. First, we want to add a prefix to the name, prefix decorator, before greeting the name. Now let's call the grid function with the required argument, which is name. We can now print the returned value on the screen. Now let's execute the program again. Hi, Mr. Ray. Remember that the order of the decorator really matters. So if we were to do this, we are going to get another output, Mr. Hi Ray, which is not desired output. What you've done here is similar to this, Let's make use of the previous syntax we were using. First, let's say decorated greeting. Then you want to first call the prefix decorator, prefix decorator. And in the prefix decorator, you want to pass the function you want to decorate, which is greet. Then again, you want to make use of another decorator, which is greetings decorator. Now, you cannot make use of this. You want to pass the name, let's say Ray. We want to print the output to the screen, which is this point. Now let's execute the program to see the result. Oh, we should have removed this. Now let's execute the program again. Great, it works as expected. 
before I move on to show you something, I want to add doc strings to the wrapper function. I'm going to say prefix decorator and also for the previous decorator, which is greeting decorator, I want to add a doc string as well, which is greeting decorator doc. As we've seen from the previous example, a decorator wraps another function. Let's try to access the name and the documentation of this grid function. So we are going to say print the grid function and a special variable called name, which returns the name of the function. We also have another special variable called docs. Now let's execute the program to see what is returned. We are able to access the name of the grid from the function and the documentation of the grid function, which is greets a user incorrectly. Now, if we make use of a decorator, let's make use of a decorator. Let's see what is returned now. As you can see, this output shows that the decorator hides the grid function information. It only returns the information of the closure, which is the wrapper function. To fix this, we need to use the func tools module provided by Python. We need to import func tools, import func tools, which is a built-in module. Now let's go ahead to make use of the func tools. So on top of the wrapper function, we want to say func tool at func tool dot wraps, then the function passed. Now if we were to run the program again, everything will work fine. Great. The decorated function is now returning its metadata. Some commonly used built-in decorators in Python include at property, at class method, at static method, and so on. These decorators are used with methods defined within a class. All right, friends, all the decorators we've used are functions. In this one, we are going to discuss how a class can be turned into a decorator. In Python, any object that you can call using a pair of parentheses is said to be a callable. We are able to use parentheses with good decorator because good decorator is callable, which means it can be called. If I were to set the value of good decorator to be a string data type, you will see that Python will raise an error. Let's say ABC, which is a string. Now let's execute the program to see what happens. Python raised a type error. String object is not callable, which means you can't call a string object. In short, you can't use a pair of parentheses to call a string. The implication of this is that if we were to use a class as a decorator, then a class must be callable. By default, classes are callable because you can always create instances of a class by calling the class. The first question is that can a class be called? The answer is yes. Classes are callable by default. Second, can we pass arguments to a class when we are calling it? Absolutely yes. By making use of the special init method, we can do that. And the third question is, is a class instance callable? Remember that we are going to call an instance here. We can make an instance callable by defining this special method. So now let's go ahead to turn a class to a decorator. Let's name the class grid decorator, grid decorator. We need to define the constructor method def init. It takes the first parameter as self. And when we are calling this class, that is when we are instantiating it, we need to pass a function. So let's say func, which is for a function. Now we can say self.func equals the passed function. Now let's define the special call method. It takes the first parameter as self, pass. When an instance of this class is called, the name needs to be passed. So let's say it takes a parameter name. Now let's call the function returned underscore value equals, we want to call the function self dot func, and we want to pass the name as an argument. F strings high, the returned value from the function call. We can now try out this. Let's make use of this here. Decorated greeting equals the greet decorator, which is a class. When you instantiate this class, this special init method, which is 
the constructor method is called. The grid function you passed here is this. And we are making instances of the class to be callable by defining this call method. When you call this instance, you are expected to pass a name. The name is captured here. All right, now, so let's go ahead to try out the program. Great, it works. Finally, we can make use of it using the add symbol. Going to see, I'm going to comment out this. Now, I want to decorate the grid function by using the grid decorator, which is a class. Now, let's call the grid function again. And the output should be printed to the screen points. Let's execute the program again to see the outputs. We didn't pass the required argument. All right, it works. Decorators are commonly used in logging. This might entail measuring the execution time of a program or inspecting arguments used in a function call. For example, if you wish to determine the duration it takes for a function to complete its execution, we can import the time module to achieve this. What that means is that before the function call and after the function call, we can note the time. Also, decorators are extensively used for authentication and permission checks within frameworks like FastAPI and Django. Within this function, we can do some checks before calling the actual function. For instance, we may want to restrict some certain names. I hope you now have a better understanding of decorators. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Like, comment, and share. Thanks.